Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior and welcome to another Mortal Kombat video. Now today will be the next installment in my What's the Difference series. Now for those of you who are quite unfamiliar with this, as let's face it, I haven't made a What's the Difference video in a very long time, it's where I talk about a character from the Mortal Kombat universe and take their two different timeline counterparts and compare the two. By doing so, we can see the similarities that they share, as well as the massive changes in the old timeline and in the new timeline. Now today's episode will be on none other than the blind swordsman Ken. She. Now first off, let's talk about the similarities that these two different timeline counterparts actually share, and that is their origin story. You see, Kenshi is from a rich lineage of fighters that were extremely well known for their amazing swordsmanship, so naturally he'd want to carry on their legacy. But Kenshi struggled finding a blade that would really stick with him well. He wanted a weapon that would embody all of his strengths and none of his weaknesses. The tales of his pursuit caught the ears of a very old man named Song, believing Kenshi to be a very talented talented fighter, and one that did deserve the best, he would lead the young man to a well that housed an extremely powerful blade. Now Kenshi went to unseal the well, but once he did, an army of souls would escape from it, and the amount of energy that was fired out of this small well completely blinded Kenshi. He would reach out to Song for assistance, but hear a different voice in response. You see, old man Song was none other than Shang Tsung. He had just played Kenshi into his own personal plan. You see, Shang Tsung knew what would happen if that well was open, and he himself was only interested in the souls that lied within. So Kenshi more or less played right into his hands and took the bait. Now after draining the souls from the well, he would leave Kenshi there to die, as he wanted his last few moments to be filled with regret and despair. Now Kenshi in this instance was quite lucky, as you see he was guided by a mysterious voice that lured him into the well. When he got close enough, he realised that the well really did house a sword, one by the name of Sento, a weapon that by chance was actually part Passed down his bloodline. So when Kenshi picked up the blade, it would guide him out of the well and from this point onwards become his eyes. And naturally, after these events, Kenshi had a personal vendetta against Shang Tsung and thus wanted his head for what he had done to him. Now, honestly, that is as far as similarities do go, as the different timeline versions of Kenshi really do go off in their own direction. Now, one somewhat minor thing is that in the original timeline, Kenshi was actually taught telekinesis by Ermac, because in the original timeline, timeline, Ermac doesn't somewhat remain evil. In the new timeline, on the other hand, Kenshi seemingly just has this ability out of the gate. But that may be because he was DLC in MK9 and wasn't really involved in the main story mode of that game, so they may have just written that in for him. Another big change is his pursuit of Shang Tsung. In the original timeline, where he debuted in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, he was put in that game at the right time, in the sense that Shang Tsung and Quan Chi were kind of at the peak of their own power, having slain Shao Kahn and Liu Kang. They became the most formidable pair in the series. However, in the new timeline, this is completely different. Although Kenshi has a vendetta against Shang Tsung, we don't see this get resolved in any way, shape, and form. Because again, since he did appear as DLC and wasn't involved in the main story, we don't get to see any interactions between the two. Plus, Shang Tsung was somewhat killed off during the end half of MK9, where he has his soul torn out of his body and put into Sindel. Now, this one is fairly obvious, but due to the massive time gap between MK9 and MK. I thought it'd at least be worth mentioning. In the original timeline, Kenshi is stabbed through the gut during the Battle of Armageddon and is finally stomped on and killed by Shang Tsung. So in a way, their conflict is resolved in the original timeline, with Shang Tsung being victorious. Now obviously, it's very, very different in the new timeline, as during the time span between MK9 and MKX, Kenshi, for one, fell in love with a woman called Su Chin, the two would have a child called Takeda, and also around this time, Kenshi would help Hanzo deal with the PTSD he he had suffered from being under the control of Quan Chi, so he would knit a very tight relationship with the former Scorpion, to the point where he would entrust his son to him. So really, everything you see about the character post MK9 is all completely new and unique to the timeline. Even in terms of personality, the two different timelines are somewhat different. Although they both deeply care about justice and doing the right thing, along with a little hint of revenge against Shang Tsung, for the most part they are the same. However, with the new timeline and the inclusion of Takeda, we get to see more of an adult and remorseful side of Kenshi that we didn't see in the previous timeline, as he deeply regrets the pain that he put Takeda through of his wrongdoings when he was undercover with the Red Dragons. So we get to see a rather interesting father-son dynamic between him and Takeda, something that obviously doesn't exist in the original timeline. So overall, if we are to compare the two different timelines, the two are rather different. Hell, Kenshi appears much later in the original timeline, but in the MK9 reboot he appears much earlier, but that's due to his inclusion as 
DLC. But yeah, that wraps up my What's the Difference video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and actually have learned more by doing so. Kenshi's most certainly a fan favourite within the series, and it was rather fun picking apart the differences that the two share, as there are a lot of characters in the Mortal Kombat universe that do change and evolve over the course of time, especially when you take into account how the universe was rebooted. But yeah, that kind of does wrap it up for this video, guys. Now, I don't have many other characters in mind, but please do let me know down in the comments below what other characters you'd like to hear me cover. As you guys always know, I'm very interested in what you have to say. But yeah, that's it for now, guys. Now, before this video wraps up, if possible, let's try getting it to about 500 likes. It's a great way of supporting this channel since YouTube's ad system is broken as hell. So by giving it a thumbs up, it helps out a ton. And if you want to go that extra step, we also have a Patreon set up. And a link for it will be down in the description below. Also, don't forget to ring that bell since YouTube right now is having a lot of problems with my videos not appearing in your sub boxes. That bell's probably the best way to let you know when I've uploaded a video. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Anyway, guys, as always, please comment, like, subscribe, and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you.